Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is Section 7.8. Now students enter Section 7.8 having studied limits, derivatives, and integrals, the big three. However, it's been a while since they've looked at limits and derivatives. So we're not necessarily going to review those, however, we are going to need to use them a little bit. Now, in Section 7.8, students are going to try and move from the finite to the infinite. So the essential question we would like students to be able to answer at the end of Section 7.8 is how do I properly evaluate an integral with infinite limits of integration or infinite discontinuities? So the text starts with two great examples, examples one and two, trying to show students the difference between whether an integral converges or diverges. And these terms are new to students. They really probably have not seen these before. The good news is we are gonna see plenty of this as we move through the end of section 7.8 and into chapter eight when we talk about series. So I think the first thing you'd like to do is have the students understand if an integral yields a value that is not finite, then it diverges. And if we get a finite value, it converges. Now, that being said, I think the other thing we're always cognizant of is trying to show students that we don't learn things for one day. We try and learn it forever. Examples three, nine, and 10 do a fantastic job of that. So let's be a little bit more specific. Example three looks at how we need to, yes, do an improper integral, but also incorporate L'Hopital's rule and integration by parts, two things that they've seen earlier in this chapter. So it's really a loaded problem. Take some time with that example. What I love about examples nine and 10 are it connects what we're doing with improper integrals to some more realistic types of situations when we try to find the arc length of something or the volume of a solid. Again, things students saw pretty recently. So really neat things to try and connect the why not just to the how. Now, let's talk about a couple things that students have to be very, very careful about. In example four, we'll look at the one-sided notation, and we'll try and address mathematical practice four, try and build that notational fluency. Students need to understand that not only is it important that they use the correct notation, but they follow that notation through their entire calculation. And the box we present right before this example does a really nice job of showing that. Now, in example seven and eight, we'll look at interior discontinuities. Now, students may not be ready for this, so what I'll do is I'll start with example seven, which has the integral from negative one to two of dx over x to the third. But I don't want to necessarily go through it with them. I want them to put that in their graphing calculator. I want to see whose calculator actually picks up and handles that interior discontinuity and whose calculator does not. That way we get a little discussion and we start to talk about how we can't be relying on the calculator. We have to be able to work some, through some things by hand. Now after this, we'll go to example eight, but this time I won't preface that there actually is an interior discontinuity. I want the students to find that out for themselves. That way they can work through it a little bit, be a little bit more confident in what they're doing. I hope you found these tips helpful and I'm sure you'll have much success in section 7.8.